Hello everybody and welcome to this video where I'm going to tell you how to start a small press. I'm going to be telling it to you by the way I'm doing my small press, Poetic Anarchy Press. Boop. And hopefully in the ways I'm putting this together, it will help you out if this is something you want to do and at least help you understand how to get growth by doing certain things. Because anybody could start a small press. If you wanted to start a small press today, you could say, I have a small press called Acme Publishing and that is a small press now. And then all you have to do is put stuff out. So you put stuff out. But if the stuff you're putting out doesn't bring any money in, you're not going to be able to continue doing that unless you get grants and all this other shit. And then all of the stuff you can put out is going to be kind of held down by how many grants and how much money you bring in from stuff like that that you get. So this strategy that I'm going to be going over with you isn't by any means a hard proven strategy on how to make things work. It's just going off of everything I've learned over, fuck, how long has it been now? Over 25 years of putting together projects and trying to build the creators up. Poetic Anarchy Press is fairly young. <laughs> I mean, I've been putting my own stuff out for over 10 years. I've been putting anthologies and things of that nature out for, I don't know, I would say eight or nine years. And then putting out other people's work, like specifically their own stuff for only a couple of years. But what I will say is I've been doing zines and shit since I was in high school where all sorts of contributors put stuff into them. Before I got into like self-publishing and the digital age of publishing and all that shit, I also ran a another small press that lasted a few years, but really only put out my stuff and some anthologies. Before that, I had a film production company that put out over 50 feature films and small parts of distribution that like wasn't our strong suit necessarily. Getting the projects made was something I was completely in charge of. And then before that, I had a record label that I ran from 2004 to basically 2016, I guess. I'm still, still kind of running it now with like my own shit only but that was uh, another thing where I was putting out other people's albums um, putting together compilation albums and booking shows and doing all this shit for them and then before that like when I was um, in college and high school I had my own little 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 record label um, we put out cassette tapes, put on shows and shit. So ever since I've been old enough to earn money doing something, I've been in this business, okay? For the most part, this is really the only thing I've ever done. So hopefully some of the knowledge I have to give to you over years and years of trial and error could be helpful if you want to start your own press. And this is also going to be helpful for those people who want to know how submissions work for Poetic Anarchy Press and how to get your stuff out through us. Because if you like, you're like, oh, I have a book. I really want uh, Poetic Anarchy Press to put it out. There are a lot of things you have to do before Poetic Anarchy Press is going to put your book out. And it's not to be a dick. It's for us as a company and it's for you as a poet to like have the best outcome possible. Okay, just for all of you out there who are curious about this, sometime next year, I, I would like to start it now, but like I only have so much time in a day. But next year, Poetic Anarchy Press will probably be putting out some short fiction and maybe longer form fiction. So that could definitely be something that you see coming out of Poetic Anarchy Press. So if you are a fiction writer, that's awesome. If you came to me through like Weird Mask and submitting to Weird Mask and all that stuff, there is a small possibility that Weird Mask is going to come back. I don't want to like 
make you guys get excited if that excites you there is a strong possibility that weird mask is going to be back i don't think it will be twice monthly or monthly even weird mask will probably be back soon okay now with all that said i'm going to explain how poetic anarchy press does its submission process and how poetic anarchy press plans on building talent building poets giving them a fan base building other poets giving them fan bases and then merging those fan bases to make a bigger stronger more thriving community for everybody okay first things first if you want in to poetic anarchy press on any level there is only one avenue to do that there's one place to start and that is the blood rag this is a one page broadside um it would be a broad sheet if it was on both sides but it's just on one side okay now this is issue 13 from this month july it's our first anniversary issue how this works down here at the very bottom it says send submissions 14 lines or less to poetic anarchy press at gmail.com that's it that is the entire submission process copy and paste your poem into the body of an email do not send me a word document do not send me a pdf copy and paste your poem into the body of an email and send it to me once you've been in here and you could be in the blood rag as much as you like like send as many poems as you like i'm not i might not accept all of them but send as many as you like and if i take them they'll go in a bunch of different issues okay from here once you're in here you will be asked, okay? You will be offered the opportunity to be in the Bloodshed Review, okay? Now, the Bloodshed Review is a poetry zine, a uh, little magazine thing here, and it might grow a little bit. It might end up getting a little bit bigger. But what we have here in this issue here, we have three poets, okay? All three of these poets have been in the blood rack. In this book, two of the poets in here are supporting poets to the featured poet who has a center section chat book. Now, again, you do not have to do exactly how I'm saying to do this, but this is how we do it, and I'm going to explain why. So what this means is we have four pages. So this is Bunny Wild, okay? It has four pages in here, and that usually means four poems. It doesn't have to be. If your poems are shorter, um, you can have a bunch of poems, but it's going to be on four pages. Rich Boucher, who is the other supporting poet in this issue, has four pages, Okay, in the back. Now, the center section chapbook, this is Skellington's by Mindy Simmonson. All of this is Mindy's book. It's like, uh, I don't remember how many pages, 12 or 14 or something like that, 16. Now that Mindy's been in the center section chapbook, Mindy can then go into the next phase of Poetic Anarchy Press, which would be the split chapbook. So like this one here, Bunny Wild and me did Let Us Bleed. We each had 10 poems in here. Half of the book is hers, half of the book is mine, okay? From here, the next stop on this wild journey would be getting your own chapbook, your own up to 40 pages of your own poems, okay? Once you do this, everything goes right and all the fucking stars are aligned, you can get your own paperback. Okay. Now, this sounds like a lot of steps, okay? But it's a it's like a ladder. And the reason why I'm doing this like this is because a lot of you and it's not really your fault or anything like that. A lot of you don't really have a strong audience. Do not have a fan base. Do not have a mailing list. You guys just don't have these things. Okay, and that's fine. Not everyone has that, especially right out of the gate. And if you've only been doing this for a couple years, a few years, you might not have any of this. You might have an Instagram that has like 200 followers or something on it, which is great. But if you only have like two or 300 followers and you're only getting like six to 17 likes on your posts, your engagement isn't really that good. So the whole idea of doing this like this 
is to build your engagement with your audience while building your audience. Because again, like I said at the beginning of this, anybody could put out anybody's book, especially in today's age with Amazon. You could just do eBooks and print on demand. Boom, everyone's out there, go. There, go, let's see your book, let's see it. But if nobody knows about it, if nobody's excited about it, what's the fucking point, you know? Like if you just wanna create to create, then write your poems and keep them in a notebook next to your bed. And before you go to sleep at night, read those things. That's awesome. The art is the creation. So now what we have to do at Poetic Anarchy Press is take your art and find an audience for it. Or at least take your art and put it in a place where your audience will come to it, if that makes sense. So how does this work exactly? Well, one thing that I've heard people complain about who are in magazines with people, like they get their stuff accepted into a magazine and they're all stoked and, you know, their readership for that magazine is whatever number and they're really excited and crossing their fingers that somebody important reads that or that they'll build a readership off of people who read that, okay? Problem is, is that a lot of people who get magazines don't read everything that's in it. Like, when was the last time you got a magazine and read it from cover to cover? It almost never happens. So that's why the blood rag I love so much a, because you could post it everywhere and like stick it on people's windshields and sides of buildings and bathrooms and shit. But when you pick this up, like say people are going to read this because they like Stephen Bruce and they pick up a copy of this to get this new Stephen Bruce poem. On the exact same page, they can't turn away. They can't run away from it. They're going to see the poems of one, two, three, four, five, six other poets. Okay. Guaranteed. They are going to look at six other poets. Are they going to read all of these? I guarantee they will. Because it's on the same page. If you've read The Blood Rag, answer this question. When you picked up a copy of The Blood Rag, did you read everything on the page? Of course you did. Because it's open, it's there, you're reading, your eye just goes to the next thing. Okay, this isn't rocket science, okay? This is just fucking social behavior and human nature. The least amount of resistance someone has to go through to read something, the better. Now, do, do you wanna like put out your own one-page zine like this? Do it. Like, I, I don't have a copyright on what a one-page zine or a one-page broadside looks like. Do whatever you wanna do. The more art that is out there for people to consume, the better. You guys going out and creating your own small press isn't going to hurt me. It's actually going to build. It's going to be beneficial for Poetic Anarchy Press. We are not in competition with one another. The more people can normalize how things are put out there, the easier it'll be for everybody. So if you have anything inside you going, oh, dude, I would love to do a zine or something like that, fucking do it. 100%. Run out and do it. And if I could help you in any way, let me know, and I will fucking do whatever I can. You want to come on the show and talk about it? Let's do it. So anyway, so now we have all these people who have now been read by people who would never have read them before, okay? When they're holding something in their hand and it's not something they could swipe away from, like on Instagram they're more likely to not only read it once, but read it multiple times, okay? So what we are doing, this is like kind of like brand awareness for these poets here, okay? So once you have been in the blood rag and there is a, a response of any kind, you will be asked to be in the bloodshed review. And just so you guys know too, if you've ever picked up the blood rag, I put contact for every poet that's in here because it is so important for creators to hear from readers. So if you've ever read a copy of The Blood Rag and you enjoyed someone's work, it's so easy to let them know that you enjoyed it. 
Write them and let them know that you enjoyed it. Write me and let me know that you enjoyed their work. It's important. So do that for them. So once you get out of here and you get asked to be in the Bloodshed Review as a supporting poet, you are now in a book with three other poets. Now, having only three poets in here is good because they're... Once someone reads everything by Bunny in here, it's four pages. After reading Bunny's work, I guarantee that you're going to want to read more of Bunny's work. Okay? You're going to want to see what the next thing Bunny does is. But they're also going to be excited to read. So now I have the rest of this uh, little zine here. What am I going to do with it? I guess I'm just going to keep reading it. So Rich, being the other supporting person, is going to get read in here. But then you have a center section chat book that looks different from the rest of the book. Okay, that's going to draw people to that. And when people come up and read that, they're going to go, oh shit, you know what? Remember that fucking, oh, what book was that in? There was this, I read this book and it had this like x-ray skeleton on the front of it holding an umbrella. What was that? And then they go back and they pick up this when they find it. And they go, oh yeah, it's in this. And then they read the other two poets. Because it's not a lot of work to read two more poets, okay? But the plus side with this is, is now the people who are in here are getting the publicity of Poetic Anarchy Press talking about these poets and how you should read these poets. But you're also getting the fan bases of Rich Boucher, Bunny Wilde, and Mindy Simmonson. So the people who like Mindy are going to buy this book for Mindy to support Mindy. The people and they're going to see Bunny and Rich. The people who love Bunny are going to buy this to support Bunny and they're going to be introduced to Mindy and Rich. And if they've read anything from Poetic Anarchy or from Bunny or from Rich or from Mindy, they probably could recognize them out of an issue with the blood rag. So we're building familiarity of these poets who should be fucking household names. You see what I'm saying? And so now people understand that. So now when, cause Mindy was in the first issue of the bloodshed review as a supporting poet. And then after that, because Mindy was in this and the people who read this saw Mindy in that now they're going to go, oh, Mindy's got her own fucking center section chat book in the next fucking bloodshed review. Fuck me. I'm on. And they're going to fucking come read it. And just so you guys know, if you want to preview of who's going to be in the next issue of bloodshed review, there's going to be a center section chat book from Jeff Taylor. And I just got off the phone with him. We were talking about the title and the cover and all this other stuff. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> fucking cracking me up. But then we're also going to have, and Jeff Taylor was a supporting poet in issue one. And we're also going to have Tamara Albana and Adam Crawford as the supporting poets in issue three of Bloodshed Review. Okay. So we have two people whose names you'll already know because of this. And Jeff with a center section chat book, whose name you're going to know because he was in this as a feature or as a supporting poet. Okay. Now from there, we go into the split. Okay. And this gives them more pages to work on. And now it's just like, this one is just me and Bunny. Bunny's kind of a unique situation because I've been working with Bunny for a couple years now. Bunny's been in all of the Poetic Anarchy anthologies. I put out Bunny's book, Monsters in the Mouth, a big, thick poetry collection, last spring. Not this spring, but the spring before it. And then last fall, um, Bunny's chapbook, The Potato Manifesto, was released. Um, Monsters in the Mouth, you can get on Amazon as an ebook. Uh, Potato Manifesto is out of print um, right now. And that I might be doing a digital copy of that soon, which we'll be talking about in a minute. So Bunny already has established herself as a fucking force to be reckoned with in the world of poetry. Okay. Bunny's fucking amazing. 
and me putting myself on the line for Bunny is me telling you that Bunny is fucking worth reading. Bunny is like the new generation of fucking poets. Like 20 years from now, motherfuckers are still going to be reading fucking Potato Manifesto. Okay? Like, Bunny is a top tier fucking poet. So Bunny's done the split now. And me and Bunny have been talking. There's going to be a lot more stuff coming out from Bunny. Bunny's going to have um, a center section in Bloodshed Review coming up in the next couple months. Um, there's going to be another chapbook of Bunny's coming out. And another um, full book of Bunny's coming out by, um, by spring of next year. Maybe Probably before that. But I'm just letting you know how that goes. Now, once all that happens and we need to start talking about digital... Okay, because the other thing that Poetic Anarchy Press does is um, limited editions, limited runs, and um, when we can, signed copies of stuff. Okay, it makes their work collectible. And when you make someone's work collectible, it increases the demand for that person's work. Okay, when we start doing like chapbooks that are out of print. I have a bunch of chapbooks that are out of print. Bunny's Potato Manifesto is out of print. More chapbooks are coming out of print. As soon as, like, the Bloodshed Review, like, these are only 100 copies each. This one has less than 40 left. Um, once those are gone, I'm considering, and I think this is how we're going to have to do this now, um, I'm going to be putting out digital versions of these. So we're kind of launching the digital versions of stuff this month. I don't know which one it's going to be. It's either going to be my book, uh, Pharma Phoenix Rises, which a lot of people um, have been asking about since that's gone out of print, or maybe All My Friends Are Dead, which was um, one of my first chapbooks that you could... I have a collection called Fingering the Mundane that has that and a bunch of other um, out-of-print chapbooks in it. So we will have those digital prints as well as um, the paperback versions of the books. Once we get to that point, we're going to be doing um, a lot of print on demand until we get to a solvent level where we can start putting out um, books for everybody and um, just have them on hand. And again, as this company grows, like we're going to be able to grow our numbers for how many units we get. And then once we get unit numbers that distributors are comfortable with working with, we could then move our books into chain stores and stuff like that. Okay. Now, all of this said, if Poetic Anarchy Press, if we do not make the poets we push fucking rock stars we're not doing our job and the biggest problem that a lot of small presses and even like mid-list publishing houses and fucking even huge publishing houses the things that they fuck up is that they almost especially small presses here now they act like if they're putting your book out they're doing you a favor and you should fucking grovel that they're putting your book out. And I feel like, and they expect you to go out and fucking promote the book and do everything you can for the book. My thing is, is me as a publisher, I need to promote and push all of you so fucking hard. Because if you do not grow, if you do not become a bigger deal... After working with Poetic Anarchy Press, we, I failed. I completely fucking failed you, and I failed me. Because if you're not more popular than you were, that means I didn't fucking sell any books. If you're not more popular than you were, that means I didn't sell any fucking books. You see what I'm saying? So, this whole deal, it has to be mutually beneficial. Okay? Okay. Like, honestly, this sounds funny, but if I were 
if I were anyone going to a publisher right now, I would, instead of, like, them interviewing you, I would ask them, like, where do you see me in three years? You know, like, what, what, what does my career look like two years from now, five years from now? Because if they can't fucking answer these questions, they're basically a vanity press. Because all they're doing is putting out your book. They're, they're taking your book that you wrote and they're going to print it and make some copies of it. But they expect you to do all the fucking legwork marketing that fucking book. If your publisher does not have a plan for your career, they fucked up. And you need to get the fuck away from that place. Now, I'm not saying I'm going to turn everyone into like the biggest fucking poet ever. But I think I have a pretty good idea as to the steps that are needed to take to ensure that every release is a successful release. Okay? Because, like, I swear to God, the second this stuff doesn't work, I will be on here and make a video, tell you it's not working, and stop publishing whatever the fuck it is I'm publishing. But I'm also going to give you this is how it needs to be fixed. Because there are going to be bumps in this road. Like, this is not a foolproof plan, but I think it's a plan that's sustainable. And it's a plan that's whole purpose is constant growth. Okay? And that is not something that a lot of other publishers can say. The thing I'll say about this that I didn't talk about, I think taking care of your writers, or in this case, your poets, is a huge huge thing. A lot of magazines and a lot of publishers really pay shit and the advances are garbage. And that was kind of one of the big reasons why I started Poetic Anarchy Press for my own work is because when I saw what advances people were getting, I was like, uh... Like, I make more than that when I put out a chapbook, like, myself, and sell it on Etsy. And this is an advance from a fucking publisher? What? The idea here is, is, um, like, obviously, in the blood rag, you're not going to get any payment for that from me. But I give you the opportunity to sell copies of the blood rag if you want to. You don't have to, but you can if you want to. Or you could just give them away. With the Bloodshed Review, I think the payment structure that I have in place, and it is varying because right now I'm putting together my reports to find out how much everything costs and all this other shit. The amount you get as a writer goes up for each step of the ladder that you do. So, like, a featured poet in Bloodshed Review is going to earn more than a supporting poet would. A poet in a split chat book is going to earn more off of that per copy than what a featured section center section would do getting your own chat book you're going to make more money per copy than you would on the split chat book like does this make sense to you guys like i'm trying to encourage growth through money as well as um prestige and all that other shit so when you are thinking of putting together some kind of press come up with a way that makes the royalties that you pay your writers more than competitive with what's out there and honestly if you could make someone feel good about their art and feel good about the presentation of their art and make them feel good with money in their pocket, those writers are more likely going to want to spend a lot of time with you um, through their career. So if you have any questions, leave them down below. If you like this video and you thought it was fucking helpful, click the fucking thumb, fucking break thumb, fucking button. Oh, that dog's fucking adorable. It looks like a tiny lion. And if you have any other questions that you don't want to feel comfortable leaving in a comment, just send me an email to ihatematwaltgmail.com and um, let's have a fucking talk about it. And again, if you want in, submit to the blood rag, okay? 
So keep buying our stuff. Type hard. And I'll talk to you all later. I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Crew and my followers on Patreon. I appreciate the hell out of you guys. Thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the crew of the Anarchy Crew, just hit the join button beneath this video. And if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.